guys, it's me Tomplex here, back at you guys with another comic book video, and it's not an unboxing review this time, as I said last week. This video is kind of important. Excuse me. This is gonna be my last unboxing and review. Not forever, for a little while, because I have a bunch of books that I got, and I really want to review them and talk about them. This is my review of the Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane complete run. Not just his omnibus that he did, which is a lot by himself, with the one exception of one issue being by Rob Liefeld, which is X-Force, number four. But I also have the David McLeany and Todd McFarlane Spider-Man omnibus, because before he did his own Spider-Man omnibus, he did Spider-Man for David McLeany, which is very awesome. And I wanted to go very in-depth into them, just like get, like introduce you guys and like say why you should get these books, because they're very beautiful. Let's begin. We're going to start off we're going to do this timeline-wise. We're going to start off with David McLeany and Tom McFarlane's Spider-Man Omnibus. If you didn't know, I had an unboxing of this a while back. I showed you off showed you off some of this, and a lot of the issues in this, like a, a lot of the Spider-Man 90s series, like the one from the 90s, a lot of issues from that one are based off of David McElhinney and Tom McFarlane's Spider-Man. It is a very cool series. Mainly the one that they do based it off of are Venom comes into play, especially when Spidey's in the black suit, but this is after he, this takes place after he gets rid of the suit. But the series I'm talking about is the, is the very famous one with this very famous scene. Get back here, shocker! Shocker! You can't escape me! I'll chase you to the ends of the earth! Looking back on that series now, it was so much fun just like watching all of that because it came out at the same time as um, Iron Man the Animated Series and the Silver Surfer series and Fantastic Four and a bunch of other great series. Spider-Man was, Spider-Man and Iron Man were tried and true favorites of mine as a kid. This is where they fully introduced Venom because Venom was a concept created by David McLeod. It's like, we need like a monster shown. And since they, and since Todd saw like the black suit was an alien, like something's alive, they, he created like this alien beast of Venom. It was really cool. He didn't have like the long tongue. It was just like this bulky alien with vicious teeth. The spider symbol, like eyes looking like it's ready to eat and kill. And it's insane. And I love how they introduced that through Eddie Brock. And it was interesting to read about this version of Venom 
from the comics was pretty epic. I loved it so much. It was so much fun to read. It is very fascinating to see most of this play out because they start out, interestingly, with Dr. Octopus sort of like being treated uh, for mental health and seeing like Spider-Man as like this dream nightmare to him, like this monster. And he's still psychically connected to the arms. So one day they break out and come for him and then he becomes Dr. Octopus again, but he's still very fearful of Spider-Man. And this time he wears a version of the black suit that the Fantastic Four made for him out of unstable molecule fabric, or UMF for short. Because he loved the design of the black suit so much and there was just something about it that stuck with him. So he kept it around and then Venom came along and he decided to ditch the black suit because Venom tormented Mary Jane and was asking for him. And so she asked him to ditch the black suit and he did. And then we get the red and black suit, which we see fully in a very beautiful manner. I love how with Tom McFarlane's drawing of Spider-Man, we see more of the spider concept than just the man. We see the man in some of like his normal day-to-day -day life, but also with like his, when he's Spider-Man, his movements are contorted. The anatomy is unique. I mean, it's still human, but like the way he bends and the way he moves are very spider-like, but also very different from what you normally saw. You just saw him like swinging like he's just normally on a rope. He just decided to like say, fuck it and throw it all away and make, and make it something new. And interestingly enough, when he was drawing the art for this, he had it in a way that they wouldn't have it before. I mean, it wasn't like this, like in a normal, like comic fashion, like certain panels were were away, it was like one panel, one panel, blah, blah, blah. They still had some of that, but love how throughout the rest, he decides to like say, nope, because there was a thing called the Marvel way, which is a way of how Marvel draws specific characters or draws specific comics. Like you can have a specific art style, but there's something called like the Marvel way. And it was like, like you have to do it like this. You have to have like, like if you're doing panels, you have to do it like, like, like a panel on top, panel on the side, side, side. And he was just like, nope, I want to make it look amazing. And it sold really well. Tom McFarlane did a great job. The art just popped out of the page. Some of it still fall, like some of the panel of the, some of it still fall, like the panel sequences, like, and there were rare, there were a few instances where there was a single page or a double page or panels were into were like aligning into each other or like moved on top of each other and Marvel was not some was someone not happy about that and when David McLeany was done with Spider-Man Todd was done with Spider-Man um he was doing something else for a while I think he was doing Batman at the time he was because at the time he was also doing cover art and he and they and Marvel asked him it's like we're doing a new Spider-Man run and people liked your art when you did it with David McLeany we want you to work on this. I think his conditions were like, he gets to write it and and draw it and do it entirely his way with a specific team. And I think they said no at first. And he's like, I won't do it then. They were like, no, but, you're, but, but people like your art so much. And at least that's what I somewhat hear. But yeah, they were mad when they did like the style, when he did the style for like the first issue, which is Spider-Man Torment, which Spider-Man number one, 1990, like the way his art like blew up across the pages and the way the panels were drawn into each other and how the art was formed and how everything sort of like became slightly 3D. They were not happy about that. They were like, no, this is not the Marvel way. This is not how it would be done. And he was like, nope. It's still going to be how I like it. And they were like, okay. I think they someone expected the sales to plummet because of this. And it became one of the most sold Spider-Man issues since I think the first issue of Spider-Man ever came out. It was amazing. Like, it was something new. It just took the Marvel script and just decided, fuck it. And they, just died, and they decided to do something new. It's a beautiful run. Like, Tom McFarlane's run of Spider-Man when he writes and illustrates it. It's beautiful. With Amazing Spider-Man by David McLeany, it still maintains like that's that same form. This is before he did his own run. So it collects uh, Spider-Man, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 296 through 329. So that's about 34 issues are collected in this book. It is a great, 
It is a great story. Like the art is still amazing through and through. I love it a lot. I love it. It's a very beautiful book. The script is amazing. David Mike, Mc, David Michelinie is a beautiful writer. He did a great job with Iron Man. Hoping to collect the omnibus for his Iron Man someday. Like he did it beautifully. It was still somewhat like the Marvel way. Like I have nothing against the Marvel way. I just feel like over time it just slightly like is drowned out and it's just sort of like becomes dull after a while. But yeah, this book is beautiful. I totally recommend it. I think I gave it like a 20 out of 10, but after reading it, I give it a 25 out of 10. It is a very beautiful book. If you can find it, I totally recommend reading it. It has a bunch of great art and they have a bunch of scripts on the inside and like a bunch of cover art by Todd as well. It's a beautiful story, beautifully done. And I totally recommend that you read it. It is very beautiful. And those two, when put in a room together, or like when doing a book together, they become a great team. Now let's go to the creme de la creme of the books. This is Tom McFarlane's Spider-Man, done entirely by Tom McFarlane. I mean, there's one exception. There is uh, one issue that ties into issue number 16, and that is X-Force number four. I was always appalled by the blatant sexism in the group's name, X-Men, men. The point is, our group will be forward thinking, gender neutral. From now on, we'll be known as X-Force. Isn't that a little derivative? I don't recall asking your opinion, Peter. That wasn't me. Illustrated by Rob Liefeld. It's still a great part of the series. It, it is very cool. It starts off really strong and beautifully with the five issue mini series, Torment which is discusses like the lizard or like someone possessing the lizard, a voodoo witch who was a former lover of Craven the Hunter and is ready to like kill Spider-Man. They never say why though. I think they explain later, uh, but I have a feeling it's like for sport, but I love the mystery and it's just like, not everything has to have a reason. Some people just do it because they want to. And it was just very cool. The way he drew the lizard, like the way Todd, makes it more of like an actual lizard, not like a humanoid, like some like horror movie monsters, like a werewolf. But it just looked well done. It looked horrifying. And I remember him saying like, he had a very specific way of like, how, how can you draw teeth in monsters? Make sure when you're drawing teeth that they're all different size and shapes, right? Take a look at the inside of your dog's mouth or any animals and don't make them perfect. I hate perfect teeth on monsters. They don't go to dentists. Like if you look at Venom, or Atomic Frying, make the teeth like sharp or like overlaying each other or look different, gritty, monstrous. They don't go to a dentist. I thought that was a really cool way of doing it. Then later on, you have another, you have a two part series called Masks, which is about Hobgoblin and Spider Man teams up with Ghost Rider in that run. And in that one, Hobgoblin is basically, well, he's got a religious freak, dude. And he tries to, to take someone as his disciple and mutilates them in the facial region. And Ghost Rider, here's what happens about his killings. Because Hobgoblin has gone past mercenary level and gone full on psycho. Like, vengeance must be served. Spider-Man is just trying to help the people. He's trying to save the kid. So there's a bit of, like, moral dilemma in this, in that mini run. And they do do it again with a five-issue miniseries after that called Perceptions, which is about Wendigo, who is a friend of Wolverine. Wolverine doesn't make an appearance in, in this book. They go up to Canada, and because that's Wolverine's territory now. You go, they're in Canada, and these murders have been happening around with kids, and, some, and in the first sighting of the first murder, Wendigo is spotted at the scene carrying the child. We don't know what happened or, what, or why the kid was killed, and this reporter decides to claim it out as like it's bigfoot and it's a great and everyone is confused they're terrified in this town in canada and they don't know what's going on or what to believe fear takes the better of them and they just start shooting whatever moves in the in the forest and that brings wolverine into the scene because people are, kill, are killing animals who did nothing to them hoping to find wendigo and just kill him but wendigo is not the killer because wolverine has an insane sense of smell and has the ability to track like the best tracker in the world better than Craven. They do it in a way where it sets up like, who's the killer? And it was and it was secretly like the chief police. And it was very interesting to see like, like who did it, who did it, who did it? It was a very interesting murder mystery. Like 
we first think it's beast and then we see it's man and then we see a very specific person who you, who you dislike and then you grow to like oh okay getting used to this kind of character and then you and then it gets you to dislike him again you it starts to like make you get very interested in characters and then throw it down the wayside and be like oh i don't, don't i don't like them because they did a very bad thing and that was very interesting it was a very cool writing idea it's just amazing through and through. Next up, we had a two issue miniseries called Subsidy, where homeless people are being dragged into the sewers by in by a bunch of inbred people who hid into the sewers, kind of like mole people, but um, more incestual. We don't know what happened to them or who their leader is or why they're doing this. They say because they're bad people, when it's just the homeless population. And their leader is actually Michael Morbius, but he was led to believe that they were just bad people because all the people in the, in the sewers said, we'll, we'll bring you the bad people. So they just started bringing in homeless people and, and later on near the end, he's like, are these people really bad? It's like, they're from the surface, aren't they? And he's like, so I've been kill So I've been drinking the blood of people who probably are good people who are innocent. And you think they're just bad just because they live on the surface world? They're on the surface world, aren't they? Aren't they bad? It was a very interesting way because Michael Morbius was trying to get help for to cure his dilemma. He got help. He tried getting help from Dr. Connors. Got try, he tried getting help from Spider-Man, Fantastic Four. And before this, he tried getting help from Dr. Strange because he felt science had technically abandoned him. Nothing could help. So he tried magic. And then he found out that wasn't helping. So he just... And so at one point he just decided to live in the sewers and go back to drinking human blood. When he found like people who would like, I, I, who would bring in bad people, he's like, okay, they're bad people. They deserve to be punished. So that's okay. And when he finds out that they're not through Spider-Man and the sewer people, you just see him heartbroken. Like he tries justifying all his actions because they're bad. And it's a very heartbreaking situation. And that's why I really like Michael Morbius so much in terms of the movie and the books and how he's portrayed in a lot of books because it's heartbreaking to see him punished by himself and the world like this. And just seeing instant karma happen upon him, it was just very fascinating. And next up after that, we have a two-part miniseries of X-Force. I forgot what the name... Sabotage. It was a mini series called. It was a two part series called Sabotage, tie in issue number sixteen and X Force issue number four, where a group of evil mutants are attacking a building. Cable forms the X Force, and they go off to like, they like these bad guys are attacking the Twin Towers when there were Twin Towers at the time. They blow up half the the first building and the roof of the second building, and trying to like, fight off stuff and. Spidey joins them and stops them somehow. And we do get uh, Shatterstar. He's a bit of a prick. We get a few members from X-Force. We get a tiger lady with some of the biggest boobs I've ever seen on any comic book character. Well, no. There is the one exception. <laughs> Sorry guys, I, I I went somewhere. It, the art is amazing. Like it's all beautifully well done. The stories are fascinating. It like Todd really knows how to tell a good story. Especially you can see that even further in Spawn. If you want, I'm gonna go into Spawn. Like if I collect all the compendiums, I already have all the compendiums so far. Maybe when issue six comes out, because that goes in a record breaker three hundred. But this is not. But this video is not about Spawn. This video is about Spider Man. Todd Spider Man specifically. It is a really great read if you can find the hard I recommend you read the hardcover version because it is better on hardcover and plus it lasts longer. But also it is just beautifully well done. They have more behind the scenes images in the back of the hardcover one. And just seeing how it all goes into each other is just amazing. I totally recommend you read it. It is a for me, a million out of ten. This book is beautifully well done. The story's amazing. Artwork beautiful and it came very neatly it is in pristine condition i usually say that for my unboxings but like both these books are beautiful spider-man stories 
through and through. They have multiple Spider-Man stories in them. I totally recommend if you can find them on eBay, go check them out, buy them. Like, like they're beautiful stories. I would totally recommend. They both are beautifully well done. This one especially goes into the psychology and more and morality. It's very fascinating. Todd, you're a great comic. You're a great contribution to the comic book community or the comic book industry. You're a gem. Thank you so much. I'm a massive fan of Todd McFarlane. I, I have Batman Year Two is a beautiful story. I have almost all of Spawn. Almost. I have all his Spider-Man books. It's just he's an amazing writer and illustrator. It's just amazing. Like I totally recommend you check it out. You check out like Spawn, check out Spider-Man, check out Batman. He's got some really great stuff. Without further ado, thank you everybody so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Tap the notification bell so you never miss a video from me. Please do subscribe to my friends. The channels are in the description down below. Please also subscribe to me. It would help out the channel a ton. Next week is a very special Christmas video. It's coming out on the 24th, which is a Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. It's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be uploaded live. Well, not live technically, but like it's gonna premiere at that time. And it is my reading of a Christmas Carol. It's my Christmas gift to all of you. I hope you enjoy. And I hope you go check out Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man books. Like, they're all beautiful. I totally recommend reading them. Like, if you're going to Spider-Man, these are the books you get. They're my top Spider-Man books. They're actually number one. Like, Todd's Spider-Man book, number one. But yeah, without further ado, thank you for watching. And until next time, I'll see you guys next week for a Christmas Carol. Bye!